strategic error this morning. I forgot to get coffee. And then there's the smear from left to right of stars at different velocities. Um, and that's what they call the sausage because it looks like a sausage on this plot. And so this has been interpreted as this last major merger event of the Milky Way. So we have developed the stochastic modeling of uh, star formations. So we see the stars are formed at the center of the clusters, and then the some star particles are, you know, run away from the star clusters because of the three body inter uh, uh, interactions. And then such a massive stars are heat the gas in the surrounding regions of the star clusters. So this kind of structures can be seen in the Orion nuclear clusters. So up until now, there are roughly 100 tidal streams that have been discovered in the Milky Way. Um, as, I can, as you can see in the plot on the right, which is all the tidal streams from the Gauss stream package by Cecilia. So globular clusters are very ancient, very dense stellar clusters like the one shown here. They have around 2 times 10 to the 5 solar masses and stars crammed into half-light radii of just a few parsecs. <laughs> begin in relative darkness. When we look at the sky at long wavelengths, in the infrared for instance, we see that interstellar space is pervaded by vast dynamic structures. These glowing clouds of dust and gas are molecular clouds, the birthplaces of stars. One possibility for this characteristic mass is that the metallicity sets the opacity limit for the fragmentation of gas. This expectation is based on the fact that gas cooling depends on metallicity, and both the temperature and the density of gas fragmentation are higher for low metallicity, uh, for lower metall metallicity gas. I spent the morning trying to go to talks, stuff focused around the class that I'm teaching, which is the galaxy. And that was just a great plenary talk, talking about star formation, which is a key thing that happens in the galaxy. Really awesome. Molecular clouds, so interesting. Hi. I'm Jake. I'm a University of Washington grad student in astronomy, and I'm here at AAS 241 setting up furniture for the Apache Point Observatory booth uh, and seeing, seeing some pretty fantastic talks. Hi, uh, I'm Sebastian Panetta. I'm a research scientist uh, based in CU Boulder, and I'm excited about magnetic interactions between stars and planets. I'm here to talk about that at AAS. I feel like I should know this. Hello, my name is Anjali Tripathi. I am the Exoplanet Exploration Program Science Ambassador at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I'm so excited to talk to everyone about all things exoplanets at AAS, both from our booth to our Exoplanet Program Analysis Group Exopag conference that we had on Saturday and Sunday. would love to see more people at our Exopag meetings in the future, so I hope someone out there will come and join us in the future. This morning I went to a bunch of great sessions, uh, especially on star clusters and the Milky Way, and a great plenary talk. Uh, about molecular clouds and star formation. I love this topic, both because I'm teaching a class right now about the Milky Way, about galaxies, and also because it's amazing to think about how our sun formed, how the planets formed, like what that history is and how it depends on the stars around it. Stars are all formed in clusters. They don't form by themselves. They form with lots of siblings from one giant cloud that collapses into lots of stars, and each star might form many planets. What's frustrating is the original cluster that the sun formed from is long gone. It's been disrupted and shredded into the galaxy and it's lost into the Milky Way field. And so we have to study young clusters, other clusters that are in the process of forming or in the process of being stripped apart and ripped into pieces as they orbit through the galaxy. We have to study these remnants and these pieces at different phases of their evolution to try to piece together how our sun got where it is. Also, I really like this mouse pad. This afternoon, I'm gonna read a bunch of posters, I'm gonna walk around, and then I'm gonna head downstairs to the press release, press conference area. My student, Andy Zanadakis, has a press release about his new discovery, and I'm so excited. I hope I can get in there with my camera, maybe in the doorway, and try to film him just rocking it. So, fingers crossed for that. <laughs> oh, I also like this. 30 centimeters is the distance light travels in one nanosecond. So light travels about one foot in one nanosecond. That's kind of an interesting number. <laughs> Next, Andy Sanidakis from University of Washington will tell us about the discovery of the deepest and longest known blinking giant star. 
Today, it is my great pleasure to announce the discovery of a very unusual and remarkable star that we have discovered, uh, named as Gaia 17 BBP. Now, let me tell you that stars typically do not do this. So when we first saw this, uh, this was uh, really remarkable what we saw. We finally have the data sets and the telescopes to make these kind of discoveries. Um, there's been a few other uh, stars that seem to exhibit similar behavior, um, although what we found is that the 17 BBP system by far holds the record for the longest event and also the deepest event. I've wanted to come to AAS since middle school, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maggie Beth Turcott. I am at the University of Maine and an intern at NASA headquarters, and I work on precursor science, exoplanet detection, and um, DEIA in astrophysics. Hi, I'm Barbara. Hi, I'm Malik. And I'm Megan. And we are Breakthrough Wesson interns from 2021. Yay, thank you. I'm Alice Allen. I'm with the Astrophysics Source Code Library, and I'm loving being at AAS in person. Hi, I'm Jason Wright. I'm the director of the Penn State Extraterrestrial Intelligence Center, and I'm here to see all the great techno signatures and other astrophysics work here at AAS and promote the Peace Eddy Center. Hi, I'm Isaiah. I go to the University of Maryland and I work on neutron stars. Hi, my name is Sean, and I'm presenting on photometric classification of evolved massive stars. I'm Connor. I am a PhD candidate at Columbia University. I'm an anthropologist of science, and I work on SETI and its history. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm now currently a first year grad student at SNEAP Boulder. Um, and today I'm presenting a poster on detection and characterization of anomalous transits in Kepler light curves. I was really keen to put other people in front of the camera today, both because I was lazy and I didn't want to have to do a lot of exposition, but also, look, you don't want to see me every day for the whole video. I was having a harder time getting people to talk to the camera. People were a little more shy, a little more like, no thanks. I think part of it is that people are also like, no, I spent three years on camera on Zoom. I don't, I don't need to be on camera. And so this evening I had a lot more success getting people to come and talk to me and tell me about their work. And it was awesome. And I'm getting to rediscover how much I love this event. That's it for day two at AAS. Tomorrow I'm giving a talk. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.